This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. For I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It is good to be here on this morning. God is still in the blessing business. He has blessed us to be here. Wake up once again, clothe us in our right minds. I believe the scripture says, let everything that has breath, praise God. So we're here to uplift the name of Jesus today in our worship and our praise. Let everybody say amen.
that's within me. Bless his holy name. Let us stand and reunite in our historic confession of the Christian faith. And who do we believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, my Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sat at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this you come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Let us pray, Lord. We thank you again for this opportunity. Yes, God. An opportunity that we know that if it had not been for you, that we have, we would have never received it. We thank you, Lord, for being with us in our vehicles today as we as we drove to Blair's Chapel. But we thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you, Lord, because you've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. Amen. We thank you because when we know that when we're down to nothing, you are up to something. We thank you, God, for just being who you are. And now we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity as the Holy Spirit is manifested in this place today, Lord. We just ask that it touch heart to heart individually and then bind us collectively, Lord, that we can worship you in spirit and in truth and be of one mind and be of one heart. Lord, we thank you. We know that the word says that the body of Christ has many members. Not all of us have, have the same office, but all of us work together to your glory. So, Lord, we thank you. And those who cannot be here today, Lord, we just ask that wherever they may be, Lord, that you just touch them as only you can. With a healing finger, if they're sick, if they're discouraged, Lord, we ask that you just encourage them right now. If their hearts are broken, Lord, we know that you are a heavy heart fixer. So, Lord, we just ask, whatever it may be today, that, that you will that you will do it in the name of Jesus. Help us as we go forward today in this worship service, Lord, that we will worship you and we will worship you without reservation, Lord. Help us that we may be able to open our hearts and our mouths and our, and our minds and to everything we do that you receive the glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Scripture this morning from 21st chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew's Gospel, 21st chapter. Amen. You can let me. chapter of the Gospel of St. Matthew, beginning with verse 1. Read from the New King James Version, it reads as follows. Now when they drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a coat with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone say anything to you, you shall say, the Lord has need of them, and immediately he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, lowly and sitting on a donkey, a coat, the foal of a donkey. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the coat, laid their clothes on them, and set him on them. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the, then the multitudes went before, and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? So the, the, the multitude said, This is Jesus prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. 
Then Jesus went into the temple of God and drove out all those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the table of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, yeah. Yeah. but you have made it a den of thieves. Right. Then the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. But when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying out in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant and said to him, Do you hear what these are saying? And Jesus said to them, Yes. Have you never read out of the mouths of babes and nursing infants? You have. You have perfected praise. Then he left and went out of the city to Bethany. And he lodged there. The Amen. word of God for the people of God. Amen. 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 Amen.
God we stand. If he's ever done anything in your life, you can testify and say, what a mighty God we serve. Amen. God. And I believe every person in this place today could testify this to something, something that God has done for you. And when people say there was no way, God made a way. Amen. What a mighty God. We serve. When heaven and earth adores him, he's got to be a mighty God when the angels bow before him. He's got to be a mighty God to pick you up, turn you around, place your feet on solid wasn't going to tell nobody, but you can't keep it to yourself, what the Lord has done for you. Oh, what a mighty God. Listen, when, when we sing these songs, come on, come on, they ought to mean something. We shouldn't be singing them just to get lights on Facebook. They ought to mean something to you. If you never, if you never felt amazing grace, when the song, when somebody sings that amazing grace and you don't know nothing about it, and you're sitting there and you're saying, "What they crying for? Why they shouting over? Because they know that God has done a new thing in their life." Okay. It ain't preaching time, so let me stop. There's some things that I tell you, I got some stuff I can tell you. Amen. Uh, who's the young man back there that's got the fresh hair? Cut? That's the actress. Yeah, yeah, come on, you're going to help with offering today. Uh, Michael, come on. And help today. All right. And uh, thank you, Holy God. First of all, well, you can't be God's given. Yes, yes. No matter how you cry, how how you try, or cry. <laughs> the more you give, yes. the more He gives to you. Yes. Yes. Yeah, we cry sometimes, but we have to go in our pockets. But uh, giving's supposed to hurt. It is. It's supposed to hurt sometimes. But that's when you're making that ultimate sacrifice yes. to a God who's made the ultimate sacrifice for us. Amen? Amen. 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 I believe, wait a minute before y'all begin, I think somebody is coming up to do an appeal before the offering. Before the offering. Who's the appeal person? All right, come on and make the appeal. Come on, make this appeal because we got to keep on worshiping God up in here. Amen. 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 Hey man, a great appeal person is coming. Uh, Evelyn Cato. She know how to be. Amen. Good morning, church. I want to say to everyone out in uh, Facebook land how great we appreciate your viewing, your giving, and we want to say thank you to those that have given. Uh, already. And we want to just ask the Lord just bless you abundantly because there has been some generous giving and offerings that has come in. I just want to appeal to you real quickly. You will have a, a pledge card 
And now we're on our phase one. And those pledge cards are asked to be filled out and placed back into the uh, tray, the offering tray. And just briefly, if I can get this phone up. Mm. We have 15 pledge cards already. And that equates to 8,200 in pledges. We received as of today, 1654 uh, in pledges. Amen. But you know what? I already feel the, yes, feel the rain coming. Yes, I feel the rain. Huh? Amen. I feel the rain. Amen. Because you already see the evidence. Right. The evidence is in your eyes. Like, right. huh? Now let's come on with the rain. Uh, as, as you right. fellas know, let it rain. Yeah. Amen. I ain't gonna say no more about that. But I thank you. Thank each and every one who is participating in this project. And God bless you. And like I said, we will continue to give you a brief update periodically. God bless you. God bless you.
before you long. I only have a few announcements this morning. Immediately after church, uh, the missionaries would like to meet at least 10 minutes, no more than 10 minutes after church. Also on Saturday, September 13th, uh, I'm sorry, April 13th, 2024, the Code Red continues. The ministry on the mission of cultivation in our community will have a prayer breakfast at the Kirkendall Center at Lane College. The breakfast cost will be $25. The speaker will be Dr. Christopher Davis. This will be the, the Code Red Contagion. Also, on yesterday, they would like to thank everybody that came out with all the donations that were given. They had a very great time on yesterday. They thank everybody that came. Also, Sister Neal has some more speeches for any child that would like to do an Easter speech on next Sunday. You please see uh, Sister Jackie Neal. She would have those. Do we have any guests that would like to stand? I see some faces I recognize and some I didn't. If you don't want to stand for Pastor Cole, for Sister Angela Cole, and the entire Blair Chapel family, we thank you for coming. And please keep coming down. Amen. 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 Um. This coming Friday, which is Good Friday, uh, at Mother Liberty, they will have the seven last words beginning at noon. At noon, and I will be, I will be the one preaching the first word at noon. So if you're, if you're available at noon on this coming Friday, uh, I will be more than happy to see you at Mother Liberty. Amen. 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 I do. Somebody, well, let me say this first. I want to uh, thank all of you for the ones who uh, gave us the anniversary uh, shout outs. Uh, on last this past Wednesday uh, was the uh, first lady and I's anniversary. I've uh, been married 20 years. And, uh, and, and what I love about that is I asked her. Uh, what, do you, what does she want to do? And she didn't say she wanted to go to Aruba or, or nothing like that. She just wanted to go out to Memphis to a restaurant to eat. And so that's what we did on yesterday and had a really good time. Uh, but thank God for her uh, for 20 years. Uh, I don't know where I'd be uh, without her by my side. Amen. 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 And so uh, I'm grateful. I'm uh, grateful to have her uh, as my wife. I do know there is a birthday. Somebody here has a birthday today. I think they turned 20, 22 and a half. Is there such thing as that? <laughs> Name Pam. Pam. I think Pam. Oh. It's 22 and a half year old Pam. <laughs> Pam. Would you stand up, Pam, so they can see you? Eh? <laughs> I'm not the only somebody in here getting old, am I? <laughs> Amen. But glad to, uh, happy birthday to all of you. Amen. It is a blessing. It's a blessing to have a birthday. Amen. That means that God has spared us another year. Amen. Amen. So grateful for that. Who? Is it that one else? Stand up, Lord, folks. If your birthday is in Lord, stand up. Uh, I'm like Brooke Hemi, Sister Marquita. Tell you, your birthday in March. Oh, he wants to be a part of it. Sister Christina, there's Sean back there. Wait a minute. Your birthday in March, too, Sister Matt. I thought your birthday was in February and January and December. And 
And then uh, Miss Savannah back there, her birthday. What day? 19th. Okay. All right. So it just passed. All right. And I see you back there on your birthday. I know you about 19 or 20. Amen. <laughs> Amen. May the Lord bless all of you. I'm glad to see uh, Ms. Cobb walk in, uh, walking in strong, walking in strong. Let's show you what the Lord can do, don't we? Yeah. Amen. She went from a cane and now she walking, she walking strong. God is able to do all things, but not, but He cannot fail. I'm, I'm, I'll ask you to keep the name of uh, Pastor Ricky Anderson of Cool Springs. In your prayers, uh, he he had a fall uh, some time back and uh, injured himself, and then he had another fall this morning. And so he was in the uh, he was at the emergency room today with his wife. But we're going to keep him in our prayers, Amen. And then uh, uh, Leonard Maxwell, want to keep him in prayer. Uh, and then uh, Brother John Coma. And then Reverend Virgie Brown, Reverend Ida Merriweather, uh, who's not feeling well this morning. And to all of all of those that we may know that are in the need of prayer, let us keep them, keep their names in prayer. Amen. Just for a few minutes, let us just meditate on the goodness of God. Just silently. Just silently meditate. <coughs> and while you're in silence, think of the names of those that you know who are suffering right now. those in need of a savior. Those who are sick. Those who are on drugs. Those who are wayward. Family members who can't seem to get things right. young people who are locked into the court system. Seniors in this church who have went above and beyond to make sure everything is all right. Think about your own healing. Your own salvation. How he's brought you out. How you're better today than you were last year. Because of who he is. Ask him in your heart right now to strengthen you. Ask him right now to remove envy. Ask him to remove anger. Ask him to remove resentment. Ask him to remove backstabbing. Ask him to remove all things that get in the way of you giving him his glory. Tell him thank you. Just tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. For all that he has done. Tell him thank you. For saving riches like us. Tell him thank you. Our 
Sister Stella was in a hit and run accident. She's here this morning. Tell him thank you. Think about the food that God has provided that's on your table. Yes. And the clothes that's on your back. Think about how you were able to walk in here today. Yes. Tell him thank you. Think about when we got sideways with God. And how he just woke us up again. In spite of myself. Tell him thank you. Think about our children in the school system that come home each and every day. Think about all the bomb threats. But yet no harm has come to them. Tell him thank you. God, we give it all to you. All to you. For thou art worthy. We thank you for the meditation of our hearts. We just pray that it be acceptable in your sight. For we recognize that you are our strength and our redeemer.
pray the word in my mouth and meditate in my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I pray that all that is said and done here today will be to thy glory in Jesus' name. Amen. It is good to be in the house of worship. Amen. Be here one more time. God is still blessing over and over again. All honor and glory be to him. Jesus Christ, our Lord, the Holy Spirit, our comforter and our guide to uh, Reverend Ida Merriweather, who is dealing with a cold. She's not, she's not ill, ill, but you know, a cold, a cold can get on your nerves if nothing else. So we ask that she be strengthened and healed in the name of Jesus. Uh, uh, in Mississippi, preaching today and to uh, Elder Harper and, and Reverend Harold Womack uh, in his absence to my wife, Ms. Angela Cole, and to all of God's children. Uh, we are, we're just glad. God is still here. From the passages that I read earlier, Matthew's Gospel, 21st chapter. I want to just pin as a thought for a few minutes on this Palm Sunday. How do you respond to praise? How do you respond to praise? Thank you, Ushers. How do you respond? praise. Let me begin by saying that pride is a pinnacle or peak. When you do something so well that people praise you, sometimes we can think that we have arrived. That's pride. After all, that's what we want, isn't it? We want to reach the height of perfection in whatever we set as our goal in life. And to be proud of our accomplishments. That's okay. That's human nature. We are created in the image of God. But we still have fleshly natures. Even after we have been saved. Not all pride is bad. When you do something or pride can make your works hard because you want to use your talent to help other people. But the scripture warns us that pride can also be detrimental. Proverbs 16 and 18 warns us that pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before the fall. It can trip us up and turn us toward our own demise. Right. Proverbs 16 says it's better to be of a humble spirit on, with the lowly yeah. than to divide the spoil right. with the pride. Right. Pride is a good thing, yeah. but you have to temper it down by humility. On, In other words, you can't be so full of pride yep. that you think the world can't go on without you. Am I in the right zip code this morning? Some people think that if I don't do it, things are going to fall apart. But the Bible tells us it's better to be of a humble spirit. It's nothing wrong with being proud of your accomplishments. But if your accomplishments are not doing anything except making your head fat, then it's not a good thing. This, what does this have to do with Palm Sunday? I'm glad you want to know. Nowhere in the scripture does Jesus receive more praise than when he made his entry into Jerusalem. The, 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 the usual condemners took a back seat and on this day to the throngs of people who believed that Jesus was the Messiah. This kind of praise can have 
a serious effect on a person. It might cause somebody to say, uh, I've arrived and I don't need anything else. <laughs> but Jesus didn't think like that. All the praise in the world could not deter him from doing what he came to do. I'm like Miss, I'm like Reverend Meriwether. I got a scratchy throat today. <clears throat> Even though he was made flesh, he was still God. He was still full of grace and truth. And the next day, after all of that praise, Jesus went right back to work. He said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. For the night come when no man can work. Jesus knew his time on earth was far spent and he could have taken a breather. But there was work that needed to be done. And that's what I want us to focus on today. How did Jesus react to all that praise? The day after Mark 11, 11 said, so many thousands upon thousands, they laid their garments in his path. But how did he respond to all that praise? The record is clear. He went back to work. No time off for good behavior. No rest for the weary. Jesus plunged right back into what his father's will was for his life. John wrote in John 21 and 25, there are also many other things which Jesus did, which if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. In other words, the stuff that we know about that Jesus did, he did a whole lot more than that. But one thing that we do know that he did, he cleansed the temple. Jesus went to the temple of God, cast out all of those that bought and sold, overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves, and said unto them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you made it a den of thieves. The temple was filthy. But it didn't need a mop and a broom or a vacuum cleaner. But it did need cleansing. As the worshipers came, they bought doves for their annual sacrifice. But Jesus cleansed the temple because the people who were buying, the people that were selling were cheating the people that were buying. Somebody gonna help me preach in a minute. It's just like back in the day when you used to go and get your meat cut at the supermarket. And the butcher would put his finger on the scale to make it weigh a little bit more than what it's supposed to weigh. So he can charge you some extra money. You don't know nothing about that, do you? The church is not a place for financial gain. It's a place for God to get glory. Jesus did not throw the money changers out so that we couldn't sell fish plates. Or have a bank sale. If you believe that, you're missing the whole point of this preaching this morning. Jesus knew that nothing keeps people away from the worship of, worship of God more than sin within his membership. It is not just the sin of using the church as a captive for your own self-gain. It's also using the church to gossip and grumble, complain, stir up division, and commit a host of other sins. Jesus was restoring the temple. It's a place for communion with God. A place to show reverence toward God. A house of prayer. Every time we come into this place, we ought to come in here ready to worship God. Every time we walk into this building, we ought to come in here to worship God. To praise God. Not to whisper, not to pass notes, not to roll our eyes, not to suck our teeth. We came in here to worship God. The whole point of the dove sacrifice was to atone for sin. To ask God to clean up your act and to, and, and to allow you to begin with a clean slate. And every time we come into this church, that ought to be our theme song. Lord, keep me day by day in a pure and perfect way. Created me a clean heart, oh God, and renew the right spirit in me. There is no way we should come into this house Sunday after
for Sunday and be the same devil we were when we first started coming. Can I get some help in the house? There's no way. He, 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 he cleansed the temple. And then he went to work. What did he do? Heal the blind. And the lame. You have to wonder how much healing would have taken place if Jesus had not cleansed the temple. See, he had to cleanse the temple in order for the healing to take place. Healing happens when we got a right relationship with God. God's power is unleashed in our lives when we allow his spirit to drive out those demons that separate us from him. And today's church lacks the power to heal. Only because it has not taken the time to heal itself. Let me say that again. The church lacks the power to heal because we have not taken the time to heal ourselves. The command is to be on one accord. That's what Jesus is, is requiring us to do. We ought to be on one accord. That's meant to be taken seriously. Now, the chief priests and scribes were mad about what Jesus was doing. That's right, Pastor. Why were they mad? Because of jealousy. That's right. No one got healed under their watch. Uh -huh. they, they, they came in lame and they left lame. Right. They came in blind and they left blind. But instead of searching their own hearts, they searched the law to try to find a way to destroy the healer. Uh -huh. let, let me stop right there. When you're trying to do something for God, People would search every book they can find to try to trip you up. Well, I'm in the right zip code. When you start trying to do what's right by God, people would do everything in the world to try to trip you up. People don't never read no more than they do when they try to trip you up. I'm going to stop right there. It's a sad state of affairs when a person comes to church itself and leaves in the same way. No change, no transformation, no new direction. Just the same old, same old. Even sadder is when the saints of God are the reason for it. I don't think I'm preaching to myself. I am, but I'm preaching to you too. It is a sad state of affairs when people come to church or center and they leave the same way they came. And because the saints of God are the reason. We should never be a stumbling block that keeps a person from coming to Christ. We should be ready to throw out the lifeline of a humble testimony to draw people from sin to safety. So after his Palm Sunday praise, after people threw out their clothes and palm branches, Jesus did not get caught up in that. He cleansed the temple, healed the blind and the lame. And then note, if you will, that the Pharisees from among the multitude suggested to Jesus that he quiet the crowd down because they were keeping up too much noise. That in your Bible? That on business, those who attempted to quiet down the saints were not outside people. The Bible says they were part of the multitude. The same multitude that the Bible says, the whole multitude of disciples began to rejoice. That means that just a few minutes ago, the same people who were asking for the crowd to be quiet were part of the crowd that was keeping up the noise in the first place. <laughs> Isn't it funny how you can be sitting next to somebody, praising God one minute, and the next minute they got a sour look on their face like they've been sucking on a lemon? This text speaks to us this morning saying that everybody that comes to church does not come to praise God. Y'all gonna help me preach this morning. Everybody that comes to church ain't coming to praise God. Some people do just enough praise, just enough shouting, just enough worship so they can get close enough to you to stifle your praise, to, to stifle your joy, to sour your spirit, sabotage your smile, stiffen your overflow, and to soften your volume. And when I looked at the text, these Pharisees that were mixed within the multitude, I gave them a name. I called them the praise police. 
Let me say that all of the praise police are not confined to this text. Are y'all listening to me? On this day, March 24, 2024, there are some praise police men and women in churches all over the world. And some may even be sitting next to you right now. Some of them may have came in the car with you this morning. Some of them trying to make eye contact with you right now. Some of them trying to get your attention. Some of them come to church and they can't sit still because they're trying to be a distraction to your praise. But just by chance, if you happen to be sitting next to one of them, let them know with your smile. Let them know with your hallelujah. Let them know with your praise. The Lord and your amen that this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away. But look at the text. It makes me wonder, maybe not you, but it does me, why these Pharisees suddenly had a change of heart. They were in the crowd. Think about it. Waving palm branches. But one minute, they were shouting Hosanna. Hallelujah. But the next minute, they were telling everybody to be quiet. Why did that happen? Well, the reason it happened is praising them either. But let me be clear this day. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. Did, did, did the praise police wake you up this morning? Did that bump on a log put food on your table? Did, they, did that kill joy bring you to church this morning safe and sound and free from all hurt, harm, and danger? Well, if they didn't do any of those things, then that person does not have the authority to keep you from giving God praise. Look at the text. We're still in the text. It is clear when Jesus appeared, the Bible says the multitude began to praise him. Notice the multitude did not start to praise the Lord when the Pharisees said praise him. And since they didn't start it, they couldn't stop him. You see, if you're not careful, you'll find yourself around some sick people who feel that they have the keys to your praise. And if they don't start you, they can't stop you. But the problem is they want to be able to tell you when to shout and when not to shout. See, so, so you have to be careful. You'll find, some, you'll find yourself sitting around folks like that. But you have to let people know if they can't turn you on, they can't turn you on. If they can't light your fire, they can't put out your flame. If they can't, if they can't start your ignition, they can't turn your ignition on. If, 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 they, if they can't get you up, then they can't bring you down. I don't know about you, but I'm not going to let anybody have that much spiritual control over me where they can turn me on and turn me off like a thermometer in a house. God has been good to me. And he's been so good that I'm not going to let anybody put a stop sign in front of me and expect me to settle down just because they don't like it. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, how he healed me when I was sick, how he made my enemies behave, how he kept food on my table, how he kept my family safe, how he picked me up and turned me around and put my feet on solid ground, when I think about all of the things that he has done, I'm not going to let nobody push my button where I won't praise God. Listen, listen. When you've seen God do some things, it'll cost you to make some noise sometimes. When you've seen God do some things to people around you, you can't keep still. And when you have seen God do some things in your life, no self-appointed praise police can make you sit down. I, I believe there are some people in this church today who can say amen with me because they've seen God do some things. They, they, they can shout hallelujah because they've seen God do something. They can cry hosanna because they've seen God do something. They can shout praise the Lord because they've seen God do something. They can say thank you, Jesus, because they've seen God do something. They can say glory to God because they've seen God do something. They've seen God do something. I've seen God make a way out of nowhere. I've seen God unlock locked doors. I've seen God be a doctor in 
the sick room. I've seen God be a lawyer in the courtroom. I've seen God be a bridge over troubled water. I've seen God on the one Friday, he sent his son to the cross. And early that Sunday morning, God, with all power in his hand, I've seen God do some things. Jesus didn't have to answer their question. But he did. And in the process, he exposed their jealousy. And it made them mad. They became infuriated because Jesus embarrassed them by pointing out their lack of knowledge of the scripture. Let me stop right there. Those of you who come to Sunday school and Bible study, you hear me say this all the time. And if you, if you haven't been to either one of them, you're going to hear it today. <laughs> Study the word of God. Yeah. You need to read the Bible. You need to read your Bible. Because when you don't study, people can trip you up. Listen. Uh, I love uh, caramel cake. Love it. But don't, don't ask me to bake one. Because I don't know how. I can't tell you how to do it. So I'm not going to try to tell you if you know how. I'm not trying to tell you what ingredients to use. I'm not trying to tell you any of that. And it's the same way in the word. See, people who know word sometimes are filled with the devil. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Some people who, who know the word, they know the Bible from cover to cover. But they're full of the devil. And just like the devil tried to trip Jesus up using the Bible, there are people out there who will take advantage of you because you don't know enough word. And the next thing you know, They'll have their hand in your pocket, right. taking all your money, right. eating up all your food, right. and that's the least of the thing that they can do. You got to learn scripture. See, Jesus pointed out their lack of knowledge. Jesus quoted Psalm 82, a scripture from the very scrolls of the priest and scribe, claimed to know so well. He said, haven't you read? Haven't you read? Out of the mouths of babes, and sufferings, thou hast perfected praise. Actually, the Hebrew translation says, thou hast ordained strength. All right, yeah. but, but Jesus was quoting from the Greek translation. See, how many of you know that there is strength in praise? Yes. You, ever been, you, ever, you ever went somewhere, went to church, and you, bit, man, you left home, you were all discombobulated, ticked off, somebody done called you and told you something crazy and got you mad, you got dressed mad, drove to church mad, breaking all kinds of speed limit laws, cussing under your breath, but you came in church and you got your praise on and God lifted that load. And, 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 and you didn't leave the same way that you came. You, you, you said, listen, you ain't got to admit it. I know you have. When I get out of church, I'm going home, and I'm calling that so-and-so, and I'm going to tell them what I think. But when you come to church, and you praise God, and when other you said, ain't even worth it. You ever done that? Huh? See, there ain't nobody nodding to him. You didn't have it. But I have. You ever came into church and said, I'm going to, uh, as soon as church is over, I'm going to walk up to that person and I'm going to tell them what they did to me. I'm going to tell them about themselves. And when church is over, you find yourself hugging them, shaking their hand, inviting them to dinner. Well, maybe you ain't got that far in your Christianity. I ain't got that 
but you leave it better than you can. That's the point I'm trying to make. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if I'm that far either, Brother Mark. I forgive you, but you can't eat with me anyway. But, but the point I'm making is, is that praise strengthens us. And also, be careful how you respond to praise. When people praise you, don't get the big head. Because you didn't do it by yourself. God did it. God did it. You, we didn't do it by ourselves. Look, I don't care how good we think we look. We didn't do it. Nice suits didn't do it. Nice cars didn't do it. Big bank accounts didn't do it. God did it. And when we think about that, that affects the way we praise God. Because we praise God, as the old warriors would say, as an empty pitcher before a full fountain. We know that we are nothing without him. How do you respond to praise? When people praise you, how do you respond to that? All of us in here, if we would admit it, all of us have seen God do some things. We're here right now because God has done some things in our lives. I don't care how long you've been saved. You ain't always been as good as you are now. Even if you, even if you, even if on the surface, Every time people see you, you were smiling. On the inside, you had some stuff in you that only praise can get out of you. Listen, you ever, and, and then I'm done, you ever just open, you ever just went out into an open space where you don't think nobody can see you or hear you and just let out a big yell? Yeah. The scream as loud as you can because you're so fed up with everything that's going on and after you let it out you feel better it strengthens you that's what praise will do when you praise God it strengthens you yeah yeah. I'm not talking about I'm not talking about what I read I'm talking about what I know it'll strengthen you it'll make you love your enemy it'll make you do right when you felt like doing wrong. Praise. How do you respond to praise? Stand or stand now in the presence of the Lord and prepare ourselves for someone who may want to receive this gift. This gift that God has for those who believe. Trusted him. Look, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not chess, it's checkers. He said, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's easy. Call on his name. Didn't say nothing about you. Had to go through no rituals. Don't have to go through all that. Don't have to go through you go to God. Straight there. And isn't that something? Because in, 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 in this life, you can't see some people without going through some other folks. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Huh? Go to the bank and say you want to see the bank manager. And you, and you ain't got no money in the bank. You can't see him without going through somebody else. Huh? But you can come to God for yourself and receive the gift of salvation. You don't have to leave the way you came. God is able. To do all things. But you know, hallelujah, he can't fail. He's too holy. He can't fail. We fail God, but he don't ever fail us. How do we know? Because we're here today. How do we get here today? We woke up this morning. He never fails. not that I don't understand it. In all thy ways acknowledge it. And he shall direct thy path. The path is clear today. You can give your life to Christ right now. No questions asked. It's nobody's business what happened. Nobody's business what happened. 
but you can accept Christ right now. Someone who may wish to be united with this church, you can come down. Someone who may wish to be united with a church, you can come now. Someone who may be desirous of prayer, you can come now. God is able. And you know, say all of that. It's saying God can meet and supply every need. Every need. Every need. We thank God for you today. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen.
Jacksonian, famous person that was on Wheel of Fortune the, the other day. Uh, and I think she won. Yeah, I think she won. What's her name? Pam Bankhead. Okay, all right. Did you tell I was her cousin? <laughs> But she won on Wheel of Fortune. And uh, let me tell you something. Uh, you can sit at home and answer every question. There you is. You get on TV. It's different now. You, you, ever, you, ever, you ever did somebody shove a microphone in your face? And you don't know what to say. So that lets you know she's a, a very smart person. Uh, and we... Yes, so she is my cousin. <laughs> but we are grateful. Amen. Uh, that's, just, that's just Lois' uh, niece. Yeah, raise your hand, Sister Lois. Amen. See, they all that smarts run in the family, don't it? Don't it? You go ahead and say it. We're not going to talk about you. It's good to have pride in your accomplishments. Brother, Brother Clifford over there. Tell me she got it from somewhere. It might have got somewhere from him. I'm going to just leave that alone. Let's just move on to something else. Amen. But God bless her. And uh, uh, so many people uh, did uh, watch that episode and, uh, and talked about it. And it is a great thing uh, when, when one, when somebody that we know is close to us did such a great thing. Amen. 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 We pray God's blessings on her. You say something. Oh. She had to keep it for a certain amount of time. Till the episode came up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Amen. But we are grateful. And I uh, praise God for her. Praise God for all of you. Thank you. Uh, last week we were in Milan for the 100 missionaries in white. Uh, and our Blair's missionaries. Uh, you know, we you know, we just always do it big. Now that's just me bragging. And uh, you know, uh, uh, Sister Jeanette, Sister Staten came in. And, uh, they, they, were all, they all came in and uh, added some you know, added some light up in there. Amen. All the missionaries uh, from here, uh, Sister Riri and uh, uh, the Pap, all of them came. Who else are we missing, Miss this, this Story? Oh, Heidi? Yeah. Who did? You got an award. What you get? The President's Award. Yeah, she got the President's Award. Amen. <laughs> And since she humble, she wasn't going to tell nobody. But she got it. Amen. And we're grateful. And then somebody was talking about, uh, somebody said something about Sister Heidi to me yesterday. I think it was. And they were talking about what a go-getter she is. And, uh, and how she, you know, how she is, how she's so uh, compassionate and all that. And uh, so we're grateful uh, that she is a part of us, all of you. Sister Jeanette, such a great job uh, last week. Uh, you know, you, I know you did that program, didn't you? Huh? I ain't gonna talk about it. You did it, didn't you? Did a great job, too. Yeah, well, a collaborative effort, but you led it, and we're grateful for that. Praise God for each and every one of you. Uh, pray that this day and the rest of the week be most blessed for you and your families. Amen? Amen. Amen. If all hearts and minds are clear, let us stand. Missionaries are meeting for about 10 minutes after service. Amen. Amen. We have uh, Brad Moore, which is from our church community here. He's in the hospital, so he had double bypass heart surgery. Church. Amen. Brother Brad Moore. Let's keep him in our prayers as well. Please. 
Let's turn it in. Amen. Amen. church say. 